In this video, we take a look at the process of database normalisation from zero normal form up to third normal form. Before we dive in, it's important to understand the difference between a flat file database and a relational database. A flat file database allows the designer to specify data attributes like the columns and the data types for only one table at a time, storing those attributes completely independently. There's no link between the different tables or files. For most large organisations, this is a very simplistic solution to storing and managing data, and it won't be sufficient. They will need to make use of a relational database in some way. A relational database takes a series of separate, disconnected flat file tables and creates relationships between them. We've looked at this concept already. Here in this example, we have two tables which are joined by this relationship. We can say that many students can belong to a tutor group, or that one tutor group can contain many students. We have also discussed the importance of identifying a field in each database table which must be able to uniquely identify each record, and we call this the primary key. So if you look at this table of students, which field could be our primary key? Well at first it seems maybe first name could, after all, the value Tony is unique, but you have to think about the future of a database. When this database grows to say a thousand students, what's the chance of more than, some, more than one person having the first name Tony? Well, quite likely, so this can't be the primary key. The same goes for all of these. There'll be more than one student with the same age or the same tutor group. So the answer is none of these can be a primary key. We can't guarantee any field in this table won't be duplicated when new entries are added. In this circumstance, we simply add our own unique um, student ID, and we make this our primary key. So that was just a quick recap. Let's turn our attention now to the focus of this video, which is normalisation. The aim of database normalisation is to make a database more efficient by removing as much redundant and unnecessary repeating data as possible. Study this table, for example. The data stored in these last three fields is being repeated a lot. If this table was to grow to include 30 students in each tutor group, the tutor and the room information would end up being repeated needlessly again and again, and obviously this takes up storage. It makes much more sense to split the table on tutor group field and create a relationship between the two tables. In this circumstance, the field you choose to split on becomes the primary key of the new table and remains in the original table as the foreign key, which now links these two tables together with a relationship. Now there are lots of ways of arranging the data in tables within a database, and each arrangement can be given a label according to how it's been arranged, and these labels are called normal forms. There are many normal forms, but for A-level you need to be aware of first normal form, second normal form and third normal form. The concept of splitting up tables in a database and arranging the data to move it from first, second to third normal form is the process of normalisation. Let's start by looking at this table of university students and the various courses they take. Now this table is not normalised we can think of it as being in 0NF, zero, 0 normal form. To get this table in first normal form, we must eliminate any duplicate columns from the table, get rid of any groups of repeating data, identify a column or combination of columns that can act as a primary key, and separate out any attributes which are not atomic into separate attributes. Now this second and fourth point are quite important, as they're likely to be the steps an examiner will be looking for you to spot in moving a table into first normal form. OK, so we don't have any duplicate columns here, and that's unlikely, so we can ignore step one. Um, we do, though, have groups of repeating data. 
Um, you can see that here. We have Tony with a date of birth and agenda, but within there, we've got multiple courses. And that's what we mean, multiple information repeated within a single row. Well, we're not allowed to have that, so we're going to have to take those out and place these into separate records or rows of their own. We also have an attribute here that is an atomic. So we should probably split, split this out into two separate attributes, the lecturer's initials, and the lecturer's names. Now you could argue that the name field is also not atomic. Um, now for this simplistic database we're just going to keep this attribute and call it name, but in large databases it's much more likely that this would be split up and you have an attribute or a field called first name and surname. So you can see now we've broken out the repeating data and we have split up the non-atomic attributes into sec uh, separate attributes. All we need to do now is identify a field we can use for our primary key. Well, none of these fields are any good as a primary key because they all contain repeating data. Now what I'd ideally like to do is add a student ID um, attribute as a primary key. Problem is, I can't do that as pre at present as I have to repeat the student's name, uh, date of birth and gender multiple times to get rid of those repeating groups. So if I have a student ID of uh, 001, for example, applying to Tony Gibbons, then I'd need 001 here to apply to Tony Gibbons and 001 here to apply to Tony Gibbons. Well, now it can't be unique. Um, so I can't really use student number at the moment. I seem to have made things worse, but we're going to sort that out later. Don't panic for now, there is a solution. Now we can create what's called a composite key. This is simply a combination of columns or attributes in a table that collectively can be used to uniquely identify each row and thus be our primary key. I could then choose name plus course number to be our composite key. There's only one problem here then. And that's, I could never have another student called Tony Gibbons take course F451 or G403 or P202. It's probably not a big issue, but do we want to take that risk? Some names are very common. Well, how about this? We could make a composite key by combining date of birth, name and course number. This is bound to be unique, surely. Or is it? Is there a chance at some point at this university that we could have another Tony Gibbons register at our, our institution with a date of birth of the 15th of the 2nd, 79, and also wanting to study course F451? It's possible. It's highly unlikely. But these are things you have to think about. For now, let's go with it. We'll make this our composite key. And let's see if once we get further into our normalisation process, we can find a better solution for this. OK, so to get this table into second normal form, we must 1. Check the data is already in first normal form and 2. Remove any partial dependencies. Now, a partial dependency means that one or more attributes depends on only part of the primary key. Now, this can only happen, obviously, if your primary key is a composite, which, of course, for us, it is. If we find a partial dependency, we should split the table on that attribute and move it into a separate table. We should also at this point fix any many-to-many -many relationships you discover. So here you can see a partial dependency on course name, lecturer initials and lecturer name on course number. In other words, these attributes are dependent or related to the course number but they're not dependent on the name or the date of birth. Having found some attributes which are partially dependent, we can therefore split our table on course number. Now, if that's confused you, there's a little trick which often works, and you can think of it another way. You could start from the left-hand side and say, have we got any repeating data? And if we have, then say, can I infer anything else from that data? So let me show you. Is name a repeating field? Yes. 
but can I infer something from someone's name? No, just because their name's Tony Gibbons, I can't infer what day they're born or what course they take. Same for date of birth. Date of birth could be repeated, but just because someone has a date of birth, I can't infer what gender they are or what lecturer might teach them. As I move across, I then get to this one. Is course number repeated? Yes, it is. Can I infer anything from the course number? Yes, I can. If someone is taking course F451, I know the name is computing and it's being lectured by Craig Sargent. I can see that. So you can use this, this inference to work out also where to split. When we do the split, course number automatically becomes the primary key in our new table and also remains in the original table as our foreign key. But this has introduced a problem. A course can currently be taken by multiple students. Well, this is correct, we want that. And one student, Matthew Gibbons, can take many courses. Well, this is good, we want that too. However, we've just identified there now exists a many to many relationship between these two tables in our entity relationship diagram. Now this is very important to spot in exams as many to many relationships are not allowed. I'm also not really very happy with all this repeating data in the student table or this compromise I had to come to earlier to have a large composite key. So let's see if we can solve all these problems in one go. To solve the many to many issue and get the database in second normal form, we create a linking table and flip this many-to-many -many relationship into two one-to-many relationships. This is also a great opportunity to sort out the student table and put our student identification back in that we originally wanted as our primary key. This breaking up of the many-to-many -many relationship is easy to do once you spot it. As we've said, you simply take the primary keys from each table and put those into the new linking table. Together, they become the composite primary key in the new table, a concept we covered earlier. The primary keys remain as foreign keys in their original tables, and in our new entity relationship diagram, we simply flip the crow's feet onto the new linking table. You can see this has sorted out our student table. We only have one entry now for each student. Yet, a student can take many courses. So Tony Gibbons can take F451 and G403 and P202. And of course the other way, the course can be taken by many students. This student number has become unique now back here. In this linking table, obviously, the student number isn't unique. We can see it's repeated. And neither is the course number. The course number is repeated. But the combination of the two together is unique. Student 001 taking course F451 will only appear once. The linking table has solved our many-to-many -many problem. The final step is to get this database into third normal form. To do that, we have to one, check the data is in second normal form, and two, check there are no non-key dependencies. Now again, make sure you understand that last point. A non-key dependency is one, where the value of an attribute is determined by the value of another attribute, which is not part of the key. So it means effectively, that every non-key field must depend on the key, the whole key, and nothing but the key. Now in this example, course F451 is computing, but that doesn't mean it has to be lectured by Craig Sargent. The lecturer could easily change, a new one could be appointed, so we can infer that the lecturer is not fully dependent on the course number. We simply break this out into a new table as before, creating our primary key links and foreign key links as we did. 
Here we finally see the database and its related tables in third normal form.